Now that you know virtually everything there is to know about the color wheel, primary colors, secondary colors, intermediate colors, we're going to start using this information plus some more color information that hopefully you already know about to, to paint these twists that we're going to be weaving together. We're going to begin painting our first six twists. You should only have six right now. And so we're gonna use only half of the colors on the color wheel. But which half? Hmm. So I'm gonna just chop the color wheel right in half and I want you to look at the colors that remain and tell me what they have in common. So I'm just gonna cut it right in half. So now you have six out of the 12 colors, red, violet, red, red, orange, orange, yellow, orange, and yellow. These colors are a family. Now you know primary colors are a family, red, yellow, blue. Secondary colors are a family, orange, green, purple. Intermediate colors, all of these two named colors, are a family. This is also a family. Take a look and tell me what these colors have in common. This should be something you do already know. Are you figuring it out? Let me give you some clues. Now do you get it? These six colors on the 12 hue color wheel are the warm colors. You've learned this before, probably all the way back in kindergarten, that there are warm colors and cool colors. And you know that red, orange, and yellow have been our warm colors, but once we introduce these intermediate colors, they have a temperature too. And so red violet is half red, so it's warm. Red orange obviously has two warm colors in it. Same for yellow orange. And so we're gonna paint the first six twists using all the warm colors. So here's how we're going to do that. On this table, which is near the trash can and near the drying rack, you will find the supplies that you need. You will need one color at a time from these big cups. Let's do the easy colors first, red, orange and yellow, the colors that you don't have to mix. Use brushes from this black cup, please. Take one color of your choice and one brush. Get your paint mat from below the table. Remember, we're always using cardboard back to your seat. Hopefully you have located your bundle of twists. You will just need one per color. So I'm just gonna take one out put the rest aside. On your paint mat at all times, this is going to be a little bit messy, you are going to just dip directly into this paint cup and just paint your twist. You will hold it on one end and you will just start painting. Now since this paper is twisted, you are not going to be able to get it completely painted and that's okay. We're going to have lots of little places showing through like right here where it's not completely red. And I think that's neat. We'll have some text from the newspaper and we'll have a little bit of variety of red and that kind of whitish color of the paper, sometimes other colors if the newspaper had like a colored picture on it or something. All of these different things will kind of work together to give us kind of an unusual and unique effect when we're finished. A little bit more interesting than just plain old red and plain old orange. If you have big gaps in your newspaper, you can stick your brush down in there, but no need to get every single little spot. This process should not take you very long. This is not something that I have to stay inside the lines, and since I'm leaving little bits and pieces unpainted, I'm going to do each twist pretty quickly. Now when you get to this end, you're going to probably get a little bit on your fingers, and sometimes artists get some of their art materials on themselves. That's just part of art. 
Now, if I see someone going overboard on getting paint on themselves, you and I will have a little chat. Now, over at the sink area, there will be some washcloths. When you need to, you can walk over there, grab a wet washcloth off the hook, wipe your fingers, and get back to work. Here I am going to the wet washcloth area using one of these wet ones that you see on the hook. I'm wiping off any paint that I got on myself. Leave the rags here. There's no need to carry them around the room. Just come visit whenever you need to. Good enough. When it's time to change colors, just bring the color you're done with back, put this brush into the water cup, and just take a new brush and a new color. When you're ready for your next one, just push this aside, leave it on your cardboard. Take a new twist and repeat the process all over again. When you're finished, go wipe your hands, get a new cup and a new brush, and begin again. Now I'm ready to start my third color, and I'm noticing that I have a lot of wet paint here on my paint mat, which is good. I've been following directions and doing my job. However, my, last, my next color is going to be yellow, and I know that if I put my paper on here and I paint, this yellow is probably going to get some orange on it, maybe some red. So anytime you feel that this is a little bit too messy, you may go over to our supply area and get a small paint mat to cover up the wet paint that's already on your big paint mat as a way of protecting your artwork. An artist should always protect their artwork. I have my new color, I have my new brush, I have my fresh surface, and I'm ready to paint again. There we have it. I have my first three warm colors, my red, orange, and yellow, done. And now I'm ready to move on to my next three, and these will be the colors that I have to make myself. Red, uh, red violet, red orange, and yellow orange. So go wipe your hands, put away this paint and this brush, and come check in with me so that you can move on to the next video.